Hello friends, so uh, I'm Satish Chaudhary. I'm back with one more uh, one more tutorial on AEM. This time around I want to focus on AEM dispatchers. I have a lot of questions uh, being asked like what is a dispatcher? Is dispatcher a real content repository? What actually is dispatcher? So I thought it's good time for me to kind of post a video on AEM dispatchers. Uh, so let's uh, hope you guys like like this uh, video and hope you guys gain some information out of this video so looking forward to um, present my dispatcher here so yep aim dispatches so i want to focus on um, a few basic things here before i get into dispatches i will talk about an aim architecture fundamentals i will talk about what is a dispatcher how do we configure a dispatcher What's the workflow of a dispatcher? What things to consider when um, when considering our development, especially with dispatch in picture? And then we can summarize what we learned uh, as part of this video. This is a general, um, a very common AEM architecture diagram. In general, we have an author instance, then we have a published instance, then we have dispatches, then we have load balancers and the end users. In the typical AEM architecture, we have one author instance. That's where uh, the content authors go in and create pages, create assets. But this is not a customer's facing server. This is uh, this is for authoring, like the name suggests. It is just for authoring, and uh, uh, it really uh, contains um, all the nodes. So, and it uh, it is where the author go in and create page and create assets and create forms uh, once once they are good with their end product they they kind of publish those pages either directly or via some workflows once the page is published the notes are replicated from author to publish instance the publish instance are generally customer facing or basically these are the servers which serve the traffic to our end users so in a typical uh, organization we have a single author instance and multiple publish instance. Publish instance, uh, it's always a one-way uh, one way data flow from author to publish for security reasons. But there are cases where uh, it could be reverse also. It could be a two-way connections. Say, for example, if we have comments or uh, notes published on the publish instance, then we need to kind of uh, get the data back. Uh, to author instance it may have moderations it may have other pieces that's why we have um, publish to author uh, data flow but those are rare cases but in general it's always unidirectional from am author to am publish then uh, we have uh, and there's one more reason why we have more than one publish instance because if, if we have just one publish instance the load will be very heavy and uh, there is good chance that uh, the server may go down. It's always good to have a backup server which really helps to balance your profit and uh, maintain the server health. AM has a very uh, interesting feature uh, and that's why AM is very powerful. It has a dispatcher layer or dispatch. It's not a dispatcher layer, but it's a web server which stands before the publisher and uh, we also in a in a general organization architecture we also have something called load balancer load balancer basically takes traffic from the end user and balances or basically directs it to the different set of servers available to to equally kind of share load so that one server doesn't go you know with a heavy load and other are lightweight it, it kind of distributes evenly to across multiple available servers so, so dispatcher is very powerful because it contains all the cached files which comes from AM publish. So we'll talk about what a dispatcher is and what are the mechanism of dispatcher, what's the workflow inside dispatcher, when the page is cached, when the page is not cached. Uh, let's get into more details on dispatcher. But I will take a break here and just try to reiterate that. Uh, this is a high level AEM architecture or diagram which is a very common pattern across all the organization. The author interacts in the author instance. Author instance once the page is ready, 
they publish it either via direct publish or via workflow via workflow is always advisable because it goes through multiple checks and this is a good time where you can catch if things are not right do note uh, both aem author instance and aem publish instance have their own uh, node repository or the content repository so once a page is published all the respective nodes and contents are kind of replicated from author instance to publish instance and then we have dispatcher uh, web server this dispatcher web server really does not have the content repository but it contains all the static generated html files or assets whatever the end pages looks like Every, do remember at the end of the day everything is an html page when it comes to browser so dispatcher is where the static versions of html files are cached static version of assets are cached and kind of sent back to the customers or sent back to the website users if they are updated so let's get into the dispatcher uh, details now so how dispatcher performs caching right so there is a caching directory uh, so the dispatcher model uses the web server's ability to serve static content think about in any normal web server it will have a http directory it will have a www directory or be any uh, any static web server which can serve static content right so the dispatcher plays the cache documents in the root folder root uh, folder or, or the document root of the web server based on the web server it the, the root may be different but what it does it, it kind of replicates the exact html structure like in any normal web web server there are two primary ways of catching one is content update way of catching and other is auto invalidation we'll we we'll look into more details about how does the content update caching work and how does an auto invalidation work let's talk about the content updates so content updates basically it deletes the modified file from the cache so if there is a change in file and the content is pushed from author to publish it also deletes the file from the cache it deletes all the files that starts the same handle from the cache for example if you have auto generated images uh, you know so we we try to have the same name for those for example if we have a title we try to have title.png or title.gif the same folder where the title is and uh, so it, it really helps so whenever we have a delete it actually deletes all the files with the same handle it also updates the stat files so stat file is where we uh, have the timestamp for any respective file so it it helps in mapping when was the last file updated and what's the latest version do note uh, there are few things which we should consider first is the content updates are typically uh, done when we know what exactly has changed for example if an author publishes a page during the process the the replication agent knows exactly what files to change so it it kind of uh, knows what file to delete from dispatcher so so it's very important to understand that we should be aware of what files has to be re replaced the next uh, major thing which we need which we really need to understand here is that whenever there is a content update it actually deletes the file in the dispatcher but not necessarily replace the file so the replacement ha happens in a different way whenever a user hits the server it will first check whether there is a version available with it if not it will go to the application instance and get that file and catch it so do keep in mind whenever there is a content update it just deletes the file from cache it doesn't update the cache with the latest file and now also like we can have multiple stat files uh, we so so dispatcher uh, kind of checks for all those stat files related to a page and uh, updates it accordingly for example if we have a page with multilingual like en spanish or any other language it will check for the entire parent channel to check for any relative stat files and then it updates the stat file accordingly the second method of caching is auto invalidation auto invalidation are typical case where the entire files is not uh, kind of um, 
deleted it only invalid some part of the cache it really doesn't delete the file here so the way it works is if the cache document is new the dispatcher returns it if, if the cache document is the latest version of the content then the dispatcher returns it but if it's the older one it reaches out to the AEM publisher instance get a version of it and then returns this, returns it back to uh, back to the user one thing to keep in mind is um, this is typically used with interrelations are uh, very complex for example you update a navigation link you update something so only part of files are cached uh, and it also works with stat files so at any point of time there is a change it will go and change the stat file with the timestamp reference so next time a visitor hits the server it checks whether the current timestamp of the file matches the latest timestamp if not it will delete the current version of the file get the new version of the file from from the AM instance AM publish instance and then get a copy in dispatcher and then uh, respond back to the query to do keep in mind uh, uh, by default it does not delete the delete the files from dispatcher it only updates the stat files of the timestamp and those are updated and deleted only when a user navigates to the website and hits the dispatcher server it's, it doesn't really delete it by itself in order to delete it we have to do a manual delete you can actually uh, get into the server uh, and delete those cache folders Let, let's talk about how a typical dispatcher workflow works this is a very interesting diagram uh, and uh, hopefully it helps understand the inner layer of dispatcher so whenever there is a document request uh, be it via load balancer or directly through dispatcher do note dispatcher can also serve as load balancer but it's always advisable to have a load balancer which distributes the traffic evenly uh, and dispatcher takes care of catching catching aspect of it whenever there is a document request which comes to dispatcher the first thing it checks is is the request catchable if yes then it checks whether it's already cached if it is yes it checks whether it's up to date if yes then it takes the document from the cache and returns it back to the requester but if if the catchable document is not catchable uh, sorry if the request is not catchable then it basically gets the document from the aim instance and passes it back so basically dispatcher doesn't contain the cache version of it but if, if the request is catchable and it is not cached it will reach out to the aim instance get a copy of it store it in its cache and then serve the request if the if the dispatcher already has a cache version it checks whether it's up to date if it's not up to date it will delete its version reach out to the aim instance and then get a copy in it cached and then serves the customer, serves the request if cacheable put documents into cache and once once it's in cache it kind of uh, returns to the requester so determine um, how do we determine whether a document is subject to caching or not right uh, in the previous uh, flow we said like is it is the request cacheable uh, th there is a way to configure what requests are cached and what requests are not cached all these configuration are actually um, uh, stored in a dispatcher.any text file uh, you can name it anything but the very common pattern is to have a dispatcher.any file the dispatcher checks the request against the list of cacheable documents which is uh, kind of mentioned is in this dispatcher.any file and then if if the document maps maps the configuration it will catch it if not it will not catch it it's pretty simple right so anything which is not defined in the dispatcher.any uh, will not be cached anything which is dis defined in dispatcher.any will be cached let's see a common example so here's a very good example of what what is cached and what is not cached if you look at your web server the dispatcher server you will file the dispatcher.any file uh, you need to navigate to the slash cache 
area of it it talks about you know what rules are there what folders are there what stat files where are the stat files where is the document root what rules are there when to do invalidate invalidate is where uh, the the files are auto invalidated you remember we talked about two ways of uh, caching one is auto invalidate other is content update if you look at the right hand side we have a rule which says literally everything is catchable you know if you if, if all the pages are static then then you can just write a rule which says you know slash all you know slash go glob star and it says allow all all sort of files as catching uh, but if you have any restrictions you can always say like you know you can uh, have type deny for any such restrictions you can always write there is no hard and fast rule uh, you can configure uh, the rules based on your need when we talk about uh, what files are cacheable we, it's good to know what files are not cacheable so as i told you before anything any document which is not defined in the dispatcher configuration file is not cacheable what are other cases where the files are not cacheable the other is when the request contains a query parameter anything which contains a question mark or a query parameter those are not cacheable if the file extension is missing then it's not cacheable if the authentication header is set because it's a secured uh, uh, secure request generally secure requests are not cached so this one has cached the second thing is any http method which is not a get for example if it is a post request post request generally involves submission of data so it's it's important not to make it catch so any any http request which is not get is actually uh, not catchable So, so here's the summary of what we learned today. We learned about uh, a very high level AEM architecture fundamentals. What is a dispatcher? Dispatcher is where is is what make AEM powerful. It is a web layer in front of our a AEM publish instance, which catches all the static reference of the files and and kind of interacts with the customer request. And based on the configuration, it either returns a document from the dispatcher or it hits out to AM instance, populates the document and serves the request. We talk about how to configure dispatcher. Obviously, we talked about uh, the dispatcher.env file where we can write custom rules, where you can allow all, you can allow limited. It's all custom configuration which you can do at the server level. We talked about dispatcher workflow. What are the different condition? It checks whether the file is cacheable. If yes, it does certain operation. If the file is uh, not catchable, it serves the content from the AM instance, and um, and there are multiple combinations around that. We also talked about what things to consider, like how do we define the configuration of uh, dispatcher.env. If there is a URL parameter, it's not catchable. If it is a post, it is not catchable. If it misses out on the extension, it's not catchable. So hope you guys. Uh, like this video on dispatcher and gain some insights on dispatcher if you like it uh, and if you have any feedback please please post your feedback here those are really helpful and that will encourage me uh, to create more videos till then uh, thank you and have a good night